Chapter 6, Two Big Bears. The one day, possibly the spring was coming. Uh, in the big woods, the snow was beginning to thaw. Bits of it dropped from the branches of the trees and made little holes in the softening snow banks below. At noon, all the big icicles along the eaves of the little house quivered and sparkled in the sunshine, and drops of water hung trembling at their tips. Pa said he must go to town to trade the furs of the wild animals he had been trapping all winter. So one evening, he made a big bundle of them. There were so many furs that when they were packed tightly and tied together, they made a bundle almost as big as Pa. Very early one morning, Pa strapped the bundle of furs on his shoulders and started to walk to town. There were so many furs to carry that he could not take his gun. Ma was worried, but Pa said that by starting before sunup and walking very fast all day, he could get home again before dark. The nearest town was far away. Laura and Mary had never seen a town. They had never seen a store. They had never seen even two houses standing together. But they knew that in a town there were many houses and a store full of candy and calico and other wonderful things, powder and shot and salt and store sugar. They knew that Pa would trade his furs with a storekeeper for beautiful things from town. And all day they were expecting the presents uh, 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 he would bring them. When the sun sank low above the treetops and no more drops fell from the tips of the icicles, they began to watch eagerly for Pa. The sun sank out of sight, the woods grew dark, and he did not come. Ma started supper and set the table, but he did not come. It was time to do the chores, and still he had not come. Ma said that Laura might come with her while she milked the cow. Laura could carry the lantern. So Laura put on her coat, and Ma buttoned it up, and Laura put her hands into her red mittens that hung by a red yarn string around her neck while Ma light, light, lighted the candle, candle in the lantern. Laura was proud to be helping Ma with the milking, and she carried the lantern very carefully. Its sides were of tin, with places cut in them for the candlelight to shine through. When Laura walked um, uh, behind Ma... Uh, 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 <clears throat> On the path to, to uh, the barn, the little bits of candlelight from the lantern leaped all, all around her in the snow. The night was not yet quite dark. Not yet quite dark. The woods were dark, but there was a gray light on the snowy path, and in the sky there were a few faint stars. The stars did not look as warm and bright as the little lights that came from the lantern. Laura was surprised to see the dark shape of Suki, the brown cow, staying at, at, at the barnyard gate. Ma was surprised too. It was too early in the spring for Suki to be let out <laughs> in the big woods to eat grass. She lived in the barn, but sometimes on warm days, Pa left the door of her stall open so she could come in, into the barnyard. Now Ma and Laura saw her behind the bars waiting for them. Ma went up to the gate and pushed against it to open it. But it did not open very far because there was Suki standing against it. Ma said, Suki, get over. She reached across the gate and slapped Suki's shoulder. Just then, one of the dancing little bits of light from the lantern jumped between the bars of the gate. And, and uh, Laura saw long, shaggy black fur and two little glittering eyes. Suki had thin, short brown fur. Suki had large, gentle eyes. Ma said, Laura, walk, walk back to the house. So Laura turned around and began to walk toward the house. Ma came behind her. <sighs> when they had gone part way, Ma snatched her up, lantern and all, and ran. Ma ran with her into the house and slammed the door. Then Laura said, Ma, was it a bear? Yes, Laura, Ma said, it was a bear. Laura, be Laura began to cry. She, she hung on to Ma and, and sobbed, Oh, will he eat Suki? No, Ma said, hugging her. Suki is safe in the barn. Think, Laura, all those big heavy logs in the barn walls. And the door is heavy and solid, made to keep bears out. No, the bear cannot get in and eat Suki. Laura felt better then. But he couldn't have hurt us, couldn't he? She asked. He didn't hurt us, Ma said. You were a good girl, Laura, to do exactly as I told you, and to do it quickly without asking why. Ma was trembling, and she began to laugh a little. To think, she said, uh, 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 I slapped a bear. 
Then she put supper on the table for Laura and Mary. Pa had not come yet. He didn't come. Laura and Mary were undressed, and they said their prayers and snuggled in, into the trundle bed. Ma sat by the lamp, mending one of Pa's shirts. The house seemed cold and still and strange without Pa. Laura listened to the wind in the big woods. All around the house, the wind went crying as though it, it were lost in the dark and the cold. The wind sounded fr frightened. Ma finished mending the shirt. Laura saw her folded slowly and carefully. She smoothed it with her hand, but she did a thing she had never done before. She went to the door and pulled, pulled the leather, leather latch string through, through its hole in the door so that nobody could get in from outside unless she lifted the latch. She came in and took Carrie, all up and sleeping, out of the big bed. She saw that Laura and Mary were still awake, and she said to them, Go to sleep, girls. Everything is all right. Pa will be here in the morning. Then she went back to her rocking chair and sat there rocking gently and holding baby Carrie in her arms. She was sitting up late, waiting for Pa, and Laura and Mary meant to stay awake too till he came, but at last they went to sleep. In the morning, Pa was there. He had brought candy for Laura and Mary and two pieces of pretty calico to make them each a dress. Mary's was a ch china blue pattern on a white ground, and Laura's was dark red with little golden brown dots in it. on it. Ma had calico for a dress, too. It was brown with a big feathery white pattern all over it. They were all happy because Pa had got such good prices for his furs that he could afford to get them such beautiful presents. The tracks of the big bear were all around the barn, and there were marks of his claws on the walls, but Suki and the horses were safe inside. All that day the sun shone, the snow melted, and little streams of water ran from the, from the icicles, which all the time grew thinner. Before the sun set that night, the bear tracks were only shapeless marks in, in the wet, soft snow. After supper, Pa took Laura and Mary on his knees and said he had a, a new story to tell them.